Orjun Jha Song Suju Reaction This is North Korea Destroy Bridges Shots Fire From South Korea What in the fuck? I, th I thought it was gonna be something overblown. That's what I thought. But now in force of video, just like a day old, very recent one. North Korea and South Korea is gonna be a war again. Korean war? What the fuck? It's like, oh, I'm gonna do this as well. What is, what is this? this? This is a human phenomenon. I don't know if it's like geopolitics or it's a human phenomenon. If one thing happens, people fall off for some reason. Even in crime, right? If some kind of crime happens somewhere and it becomes global news, in next few months, that, that similar crime will rise up. Like really high, right? You hear about the, if, if, there's some, if there's some kind of like rape case that becomes such a famous thing, then that will rise up in the country after they're like, what the fuck? What is that? Like, what, you know, like people are like, oh, I'm going to do this. What, what the hell? So no, North Korea and South Korea, obviously I said in one of the videos, like I saw the, you know, headline breaking news in my mobile, right? And I'm like, geopolitics wise, it makes sense. Russia, North Korea, allies, whatever they say, like friendship for life or whatever the fuck that was. Right? There might be geopolitics in the background, like if you do this, less pressure on Russia-Ukraine thing. Maybe West doesn't supply Ukraine that much type of way. So Russia and North Korea might have that kind of like understanding, I don't know. But I don't know, this is going to hell, right? Middle East, like Israel fighting two countries, uh, Russia fighting Ukraine, and North Korea is going to attack South Korea. China might say, fuck it, Taiwan, like, there's just like too many wars. By that, when does, a, when does any war becomes global war? Like what is the criteria? If all all the part of the world is under some kind of a war, multiple countries, isn't that kind of world war? Was it parcel world war? What is that? I guess in order to world war to be like everybody has to align some kind of agenda. If they all fight their own separate wars, has nothing to do each other. Maybe that's not a global war. I don't know. But this is insane. Let's watch it. Remember, if you like my next phone, subscribe. So that way, I know which type of videos to react to more. You know, I watch, uh, you know, like uh, ongoing conflicts, geopolitics a lot because I like to be informed and I don't trust news channels that much. So I try to <clears throat> watch as many channels I can so I get full picture, right? Uh, there's Kings of General that uh, gives different perspective, Enforcer gives a different perspective. There's Task and Purpose, uh, Military Show, Real Life Lore. So I like to watch all of them to get a kind of like general picture of what is happening. So yeah, comment down if you want to do any videos uh, from other channel or something. Comment down which channel. And yeah, let's do it. Hello everyone, I am the Enforcer and welcome to the breaking news. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and support us on Patreon. Link in the description below. Today we've been able to get breaking news from the Korean Peninsula as the North Korean government has now declared that all road and railroad crossings across the demilitarized zone are to be shut down. With reports coming today that massive explosions have begun to erupt around the entirety of the border as these road and bridge crossings have been destroyed by the North Korean government using a large... Okay, Seoul is... Seoul, Seoul is just there. Right? I remember watching Real Life Lore video long ago that says the North Korean border, North and South Korean border, and Seoul is literally just there. Any artillery can reach it. Right? And that's why North Korea had a ton of artillery that they gave to the Russians because before nuclear bombs, they had that as a threat. So when they say bomb bridges, are they going to literally directly attack Seoul? Because that would be like not just escalation, that would be like shit's about to go down type of way if they literally direct attack Seoul. Let's hope that doesn't happen amount of explosives. At the exact same time, the Republic of Korea, also called South Korea, is taking direct military armed action against North Korea and has fired shots towards North Korea just a little while ago near the maritime demilitarized zone. We've been able to get major news out of this area today, and not only that, we have also been able to hear of a major amphibious operation being conducted by the People's Liberation Army near to the area of Taiwan, as a massive naval and air force has been spotted around the entirety of Taiwan during a military exercise conducted by the People's Liberation Army, an incredibly serious incident that is requiring a large amount of attention by the Taiwanese Armed Forces as well as the United States Armed Forces that are in the region as well. At the exact same time, inside the Middle East, we have also been able to hear that the finalized plans for the strike against Iran have apparently been made, with uh, Benjamin Netanyahu now arriving. Okay, this enforcer video is like 19 minutes long, and he's reading it like a, it's a breaking news. You know the breaking news things, they just like give you headline one after another. How many shit is happening that he can do that for 19 minutes? I obviously he's gonna expand, but still. He just went through, by the way, North Korea thing, by the way, this Taiwan thing and something in Middle East. Like, what, what time are we living in? Damn.
arriving in Tel Aviv by helicopter to now speak with even further senior IDF officials to prepare for the final uh, details and the final information and the final timetable for the strike that will be coming against the Islamic Republic of Iran here in the very near future. Meanwhile, we have also been able to hear that from inside of Korea, the North Korean soldiers that have been moved into the area near the Ukrainian border are not doing incredibly well, as the Ukrainian intelligence has stated that 18 North Koreans from the Democratic People's Liberation Army have ended up being captured near to the area of the Bryansk and Kursk border, with even more possibly being captured here in the near future. And a state. Oh, just said like Russia and North Korea might have some understanding. Now, North Korean troops were found in Ukraine. Oh, this is gonna be like. Oh, I feel like this next few months is gonna be too instrumental. I know people are like, oh, why? You know, like you're you're blowing things out of proportion or something. Not really. If not, if it gets confirmed, like, oh, by the way, North Korean troops were fighting in Russia, now all bets are off. Now Russia can't claim, like, oh, you can't do, do you can't be involved. Yeah, you made North Korea involved. Now anybody can be involved. So, like, any troops can be on the ground. Now it's just going to escalate. Statement that not only are North Koreans operating the KN-23 missile launchers inside of the Russian Federation, but an entire combat engineering unit, a brigade-sized unit, has been moved inside of the Donbass somewhere and is actually engaging in frontline activities against the Ukrainian armed forces within that area. We have absolutely breaking news from every single corner of the globe once again today, as tensions are once again incredibly high around the entirety of the world. But moving on into our first piece of news inside of the Korean Peninsula, we have been able to hear that the situation has been getting very tense along the Korean DMZ and it appears that the North Korean government is taking final actions and measures to once again ramp up the escalation to the highest it possibly can go. Just a day ago, we were able to hear that the North Korean government shut down all road and railroad crossings across the demilitarized zone. And now today, we are starting to hear that the North Korean government has issued orders to set the bridges with charges and to detonate every single one of them along the border. We were able to see video footage showing that these road and railroad connections were being only reason they would do that is they know the shit is gonna go down and they will try to invade north korea why because they're, they're gonna so they are planning to properly attack some way and they're preparing like they might try to retaliate so we just destroy bridges so they can get to us type of way damn that's heavy blown up in between the two countries and we've actually been able to get a pretty decent volume of this footage just over the past eight hours since the incident occurred when you see one of the bridges being destroyed right here. A massive explosion completely destroying the bridge and its ability to link with South Korea. That's the end of that clip right there, and once again, a very interesting situation at that. We were also able to get more and additional video footage of this incident and how it occurred. So here's the clip once again, a bit of a longer video at that showing us the explosion at this bridge. And we once again want to remind everyone that the tensions on the Korean Peninsula are incredibly high. We have been seeing a diplomatic tit-for-tat by both sides over the past few months, and it appears... Man... <sighs> North Korea have nuclear weapons, man. I mean, South Korea probably... South, does South Korea have nuclear weapon or are they supported by US? I don't know. Oh my, I don't know what to think of now. I mean, okay, I guess if South Korea doesn't have nuclear weapons, it could be similar as Russia. You couldn't think that one has nuclear weapons, so maybe not. But if... I don't... I don't wait a minute, I have to Google this. Does South Korea have it? Alright, no, South Korea does not have nuclear weapon, even though they have capabilities to make one. I mean, it doesn't surprise me, South Korea, is big. South Korea is like one of those countries now, like Japan and Germany, who can make a lot of shit, right? That's what South Korea is, so it's, of course they can make it, but they don't have it. Uh, usually US submarines are close to there, so technically they don't have it, so I don't know. Because if like two nuclear power goes to war, like, you know, I don't know, I don't know. You know, I like to think that even if two nuclear power goes to war, just like how Russia is still not using nuclear weapons, nobody would. I'm hoping that. But again, like, you don't know what a person is thinking at what element, right? What time? Look at that uh, Soviet Union and USA thing in Cold War, where they just assumed, like, okay, this shit is having less launch nuclear missile. And one guy stopped it. If that one guy didn't stop it, everything would have been fucked by now. So that will not be subsiding anytime soon. 
Uh, to add a little bit to the tensions that we're seeing at the moment, the North Koreans have set up defensive positions along geographically advantageous areas of the DMZ, and right now, several thousand artillery pieces attached to several brigades of the Korean Liberation Army or the uh, North Korean Armed Forces are currently on standby for the orders given to fire, meaning that these artillery pieces are ready to fire at any given moment and may commence firing here very soon if the order is issued. We can also once again see the camera footage here showing us the area around the DMZ and the kind of devastation that was caused by the demolition charges set by the North Koreans that destroyed the bridge. That's the end of that clip, but moving on from that and into our next one, we also got to see, uh, once again, the detonation occurring. We actually also got to see here really quickly the North Korean armed forces on the northern side of the bridge detonating the charges. This video footage was actually not issued by the Democratic uh, People's Republic of Korea. It was actually issued by the South Koreans through the Yonhap News Agency. So this is the footage from the southern side of the border viewing north towards the Korean or the North Korean side of the DMZ. Moving on from that clip and into our last one, we can also see the bridge that was there that was destroyed. Uh, this is not the picture of it post-destruction. Post-destruction, the bridge doesn't exist and the spans have been destroyed. But nevertheless, this was one of the bridges that was destroyed today. And it does appear that the North Koreans are starting to make serious actions towards South Korea here just over a very short while. Meanwhile, we have been able to hear that North Korea has sent 10,000 troops to Ukraine in the meantime, according to the Kiev Independent. And it appears... All right, North Korea thing that they've been like, amping up their missiles oh by the way our missiles can reach united states now new york or whatever the fuck that was it los angeles i don't know right we oh, we can reach like uh, you know united states now we have like icbms now we have like nuclear weapons now they've been doing that for like a decade plus now of course there will be there was going to be a time where they're gonna do shit like this where they actually try to do war it's literally dictatorship right that's that's where it all revolves of course they're gonna do shit like this so I guess we shouldn't be so surprised if North Korea literally point blank invade South Korea or like try to invade South Korea, make some kind of war. And it was just waiting for some like big event happening on the world like Ukraine Russia war or Middle Eastern war. That this is an attempt to bolster Russian efforts to fight the war in Ukraine. A Western diplomat familiar with the matter told the Kiev Independent on the 15th of October today. We've been getting an idea that the North Koreans are starting to get a lot more openly hostile in the wide world, not only on the peninsula, but also around the entirety of the world, including in Eastern Europe inside of Ukraine. And it appears that the South Koreans may be having just about enough of this, as shots were fired towards the North Koreans today. We were able to hear that a North Korean naval, well, a South Korean naval vessel, responded to the North Korean detonations by firing shots south of the maritime demarcation line. The maritime demarcation line is this line right here, just west of the Koreas that spans out to the area of the Yopmyong Myon Island right here. This is what we understand to be a wildly serious situation on the Korean Peninsula, and diplomatic tensions have very rarely risen to this kind of a height, unless if it was the very early 2000s, where we saw during that time artillery exchanges were actually conducted in between North and South Korea for a very small, a, a small duration, which ended up pre, uh, resulting in dozens of casualties on both sides, although an official North Korean number has never been... Hold up there, so there is a precedent for that, right? So they did do that in like early 21st century, early 2000s, whatever. Hmm. I thought uh, since the Korean War ended, probably something like that wouldn't have happened. But that's a surprise. No, oh, artillery, some artillery attacks, some people died back to normal. Like, isn't that like war level thing? Like, oh, shit is going down now You if you use artillery. I don't know, you can just use artillery and like going back to normal. Like if you hear of like China or in, in China versus in India, like somebody use artillery, you think, oh, fuck me, now war is broken out. Not like, oh, this is just like everyday thing, like something like tug here and tug there. No, it's artillery. There's a reason in like China and India, whenever you hear of like, it's usually melee weapons or whatever shit that is. Nobody would dare use like artillery or something because that's point blank war now. Been issued uh, from that incident. 
Nevertheless, moving on from that, while situations are very dangerous within the Korean Peninsula, situations are also appearing to coalesce that are very concerning and somewhat dangerous within the area of the Strait of Taiwan. As we have been able to hear from the Republic of China, also called Taiwan today, that they have spotted 153 Chinese aircraft, 14 vessels of the Chinese Navy, and 12 other ships around the island today. They have deployed aircraft and naval vessels to monitor the... All right, all right, look, man. North Korea, South Korea thing, okay. Middle Eastern thing, okay. Russia, Ukraine thing, okay. But China? Apart from United States, it's like the biggest power there is, right? It's the only thing that come close, I mean, not close to USA, but in, in some way close to USA, right? Half of the economy of USA, which is like a lot. It technically is by number, biggest Navy overtaking US, technically. Not by tonnage, I think, but just by number. Whatever, like I'm comparing it with the USA, which is frightening thing. Right. So China just point. China could just like you can hear numbers like, oh, by the way, China deployed like a 50, 100,000 troops and like uh, tens of thousands of like airplanes to attack Taiwan. That's tr frightening numbers. Right. Russia tried to do something to Ukraine, like in a one, f you know, like in a one fast move. I'm going to take Ukraine out or something. They couldn't do that. China can actually do that to Taiwan if they do it surprisingly. And if U.S. is not there. Right. I don't know if U.S. is there. Like, yeah, there's small business, small thing in there. But if, like, China just full-blown attacks Taiwan, can U.S. make it there that fast? <laughs> That's some insane shit. And if, like, China suddenly in a week or something take down Taiwan, at that point, can U.S. even attack? Like, if, if, you, if you end the war that fast, now it's only thing left is some kind of a talk or something. Right? Let's talk about, let's peace talk or whatever. Shit like that. I think that's China's strategy. Before U.S. can respond, just take out the war. So this is, you know, this China-Taiwan thing brewing up, that's going to be too fucked up. Situation. And this is not a part of the military war games that were being conducted by the People's Liberation Army yesterday, or the People's Liberation Army Navy, to be exact. We can see the specific statement issued by the Ministry of the National Defense of the Republic of China made today that was also stated in uh, original Chinese, or Mandarin as it's called, and English. And we were able to see right down here to get you all the exact statement made by the Ministry of the National Defense, 153 PLA aircraft, 14 PLA and M vessels, and 12 official ships operating around Taiwan were detected up until 6 a.m. today. Uh, 111 of the aircraft crossed the median line of the Taiwan Strait and entered Taiwan's southwestern and eastern ADIZs. The ROC armed forces have monitored the situation and employed CAP aircraft, Navy vessels, and coastal missile systems in response to the detected activities. The period of counting is changed to 0500 October 14th to 0600 October 15th in order to specify the PLA assets deployed in their exercise. Some of the detected vessels and aircraft were also included in yesterday's report. But nevertheless, it does appear that Taiwan, also officially called the Republic of China, is starting to run into some very serious low-level coercion attempts that are being conducted by the larger nation on shore, the, uh, the People's Republic of China, that is once again trying to force a armed reunification of the two nations. We will most likely see that this will not be happening anytime soon, but it is once again highlighting the low-level coercion attempts that are being made by the Chinese after persuasion and united front efforts have failed for decades up to this point. We will be waiting to see if the United States will be making any official actions here in the near time uh, within the future, as we have seen in the past that U.S. Navy Look, man, I don't want to say anything bad about U.S. or anything like that. Not USA, but the president. Look, I'm usually more liberal, and is that left wing? I don't know. More liberal side than anything else, right? But past few months, Biden, I'm pretty sure he called... Uh, Zelensky Putin, you know, like, you know, please welcome, like, uh, President of Ukraine Putin or some shit like that. I saw the clip of that, even Zelensky is like, what the fuck? He, 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 saying that he's not in the best mind right now is an understatement, right? And if war starts under his presidency, how is he going to respond? Will he respond well, right? Because we know Bush, right? Oh, our country is under attack and he still sat there in like front of a children. I think he was in some school or something, uh, giving some, I don't know, talk or something, reading some comics or I don't know what the fuck he was doing. And he sat there for a few minutes before even like standing up doing something when 9-11 happened. And Biden can't even remember anything at this point. That's how bad it's getting, right, mentally. 
So if actual wars only pops up before like January, right? Like two, three months, how will, how will he even respond well? That's the fucked up part. Vessels have transited the Taiwan Strait to ensure that it is once again reminded to the Chinese that Taiwan is not to be considered a part of the People's Republic of China. And while the United States does not officially recognize the sovereignty of Taiwan as a nation, we do recognize the sovereignty of the Republic of China's government on the island of Taiwan and will ensure that their sovereignty, the sovereignty of their government, will be ensured well into the future. Wait a minute, what? So you don't recognize Taiwan as a country, but you recognize uh, Taiwanese government? Doesn't What makes something a country? Are they saying like, like pilgrims or something? This government just resides in Taiwan, but they don't own the Taiwan or something. Is that the point? Like, that's fine. Technically, it's, you don't consider that under UN or something like it as a country. So China doesn't get pissed off, but you still recognize Taiwanese government. Is that it? Moving on from the Taiwan situation and further on over into the Middle East, we have also been able to hear some very interesting information, giving us an idea that the Israeli strike is once again going to be happening quite soon, according to statements that we have been able to get today. We have been able to hear that the attack plan, according to most information put out by senior Israeli officials, including Defense Minister Galan, has largely been ironed out, along with the timing as well. Uh, a final approval, uh, approval from Israel's security cabinet is... Israel is going to attack Iran? Oh my god. I mean, Iran's attacking Israel, so yeah. But how much is this gonna escalate? Like, Israel's already like attacking Lebanon, right? Lebanon, yeah. Uh, obviously, the Gaza thing. And now they're gonna attack Iran. This is just some intense shit, man. Required, but beyond that, we will most likely be seeing that an Israeli strike against the Islamic Republic will be occurring incredibly soon. The Islamic Republic of Iran has largely been waiting for this attack and has already stated that if they are attacked by the state of Israel, they will respond with their very own attack in turn to the Israelis, largely ensuring that this sort of an exchange will continue and largely qualifying this on our channel as a low-intensity regional war at the moment. We will be waiting to see if this turns into a high-intensity regional war with a large amount. What is this, hurricane? news is this how bad it's gotten oh it's a low intensity war there's a high intensity war like wars are becoming like at this point so common everyone's just like this low intensity this high intensity what the fuck of uh, missiles and air targets in the area launching attacks on each other but at the moment we do believe that this will remain low intensity due to the lack of logistical abilities of the islamic republic and also due to a weakened supply line and also most likely a high level of inefficiency found within the islamic republic's military which has largely been untrained and really uh un unbattle proven or non-battle proven since the end of the iran iraq war in the 1980s but moving on from that and out of that area we were able to hear that uh ben benjamin netanyahu the prime minister of israel was arriving in tel aviv just a little while ago and we were able to hear that he has now arrived at the secure facility near tel aviv this afternoon to conduct a security consultation amid preparations for the attack on iran according to Khan news we will be seeing that this attack once again will most likely occur very soon and beyond that we don't really have a large amount of details we can't tell you all what's exactly going to be hit there are a lot of conflicting reports out there at the moment we have heard that they will be striking at oil facilities in iran we've also heard that they will not be striking nuclear and oil some people are even suggesting that they may strike the nuclear facilities and others don't really know at all israel has iron dome israel has america and like britain or whatever like that that area western support to intersect missiles does can Iran intersect missiles? Who Iran has? That's my question right now. So if they attack Iran, how are they going to like counter it? Do they have system, anti-air defense? Is it good, good like US is and like Israel's? I highly doubt that. Even Israel, yeah, even Israel in the recent one couldn't like intersect all of them, like only half of them, if I remember correctly. So how is Iran going to intersect all of that? I don't know. It's going to be really interesting to me. If Iran does manage to intersect all of those, in my head at least, Iran's military power will rise substantially high, right? But I don't see that happening. We really, to be entirely honest, have no idea how the Israeli attack is actually going to unfold. It may be somewhat small, it may be an incredibly large and overwhelming attack, and it may end up attempting to decapitate the Iranian government, may end up decapitating oil or nuclear abilities, or something else along those lines. We just will not know until the moment of the attack 
But when that attack happens, we will be live on air immediately. I highly doubt they're going to take out Iranian government or military. Come on, man. That feels like a bit too much. I don't think they're going to be able to do that. Right? Because I think the retaliation result will be much devastating. Right? Iran being like a uh, partner, partner, friend, I don't know how to say it, uh, of Russia and things. Right? And Iran being Iran, like how it's been operating, taking out the whole government feels like the retaliatory response would be like too much after that. I don't think that's happening. I think the key things like some depot here and there, some weapon facility, like like you know the previous video said like nuclear facility and places around it, something like that. Making sure to cover all the details that we have and also show all of the strike locations as quickly as we possibly can. Of course, time permitting and source permitting, of course. But moving on from that and on into the area of Ukraine, we have also been able to hear very bad news about the North Koreans in this area as well. Moving them all the way across the world and into Western Europe, or well, specifically Eastern Europe, as we were able to hear today that the Ukrainian uh, Intelligence Bureau has been able to locate and capture Korean deserters that have crossed the border from the Bryansk and Kursk regions and have entered the Ukrainian state. According to the information that we have, 18 North Korean soldiers have reportedly fled from positions near the Ukrainian border with Russia's Bryansk and Kursk regions, according to Ukrainian intelligence sources. Russian forces are now searching for the deserters while trying to hide the incident from higher command. But nevertheless, it does appear that the Ukrainian statement today is making it very clear that some North Korean soldiers have already entered custody, and it appears that the morale amongst the um, Democratic People's Republic of... Yeah, I think what's going to happen is Russia is going to come out and say that we didn't know that. Just like how there are like Indians and Sri Lankan soldiers, soldiers fighting there. Oh, they are just like private contractors. Uh, we didn't know it was North Koreans. I think that's what their response is going to be. That Indian thing pissed me off. People told me in the comments like Modi did manage to get some of them back, right? But that Indian thing really pissed me off. Like, come on, man, you're going to coerce people to do that, right? Especially like someone like Indians or something, right? Russia doesn't have that many friends left. Friends, like, does countries even have friends? Like someone who's like allies, let's just say, right? India's have been like neutral, but the one who's buying things from Russia is just like... One of the big, uh, you know, like, eco you know, like, uh, global p uh, power, economical power, right? Uh, Russia kind of needs that, right? Not that India doesn't need Russia. India needs Russia as well, obviously. It, that's how it goes both way. But still, like, you want to alienate India? That felt weird to me. Because, uh, you know, I don't know, like, you know, if the news break out in the whole, in the entire country, like, oh, Indian, Indian people who went there were coerced into fighting Russian war and they are dying. The people will be really pissed off in India. Korea's armed forces is wildly low, uh, much more shockingly low than we would expect. Uh, we did expect that their morale would probably be fairly low, but we didn't expect that nearly an entire platoon worth of North Koreans would have already deserted just in a few days' mention of them actually being active in the area and operating on the side of the Russian Federation. Another interesting thing that we've noted is that apparently the political commissars of the North Korean armed forces are not as uh, zealous in their persecution of traitors or possible deserters than we originally believed. The number of 18 deserters and really the span of 72 hours from what we want to understand is wildly high. We don't even hear the uh, desertation amounts that high from Russian forces. So it does appear that the North Koreans may actually be deemed combat ineffective due to the low morale and low unit cohesion that they are already starting to face once they've been committed just to border protection duties within the Bryansk and Kursk area. But moving on from that, we did get additional confirmation of the 18 Korean soldiers defecting from the Bryansk and Kursk oblasts. Apparently, these Korean soldiers were also the ones that were... What? A country who like people usually try to run away from like real life Lord had made a video about it multiple other thing many of the channels have made video about it like how all the system is working how they go to here then here then go to China and like those same people as soldiers when they fight in another country see like oh wait a minute we are not in North Korea we're somewhere else I can just run away ran away Pff, right are you kidding me of course they're gonna run away if they find a chance that's what happens when your living conditions are not that good, right? And when you have like chance to run, of, of course you're gonna moral. Of course gonna be moral low, right? I mean, there's a reason why you hear of like sold like factories on channel in uh, Americans like fighting really hard. Why? Because they love their freedom. Their life is good, right? They wanna pro you know like fight for their freedom. It's the whole slogan Americans say: fight for our freedom. How are North Koreans gonna say that?
Right, so of course they're going to have to run away first chance they find. Assisting with the launching of the KN-23 ballistic missiles that were supplied by North Korea. We will be waiting to get official picture and video evidence of these Koreans being captured to once again double down on the actual story and to make sure that's completely verified. But considering that we have gotten a Ukrainian government statement, that suffices as actual credible information here on this channel as our information credibility uh, requirements or really test means that there has to be video or picture evidence of the incident or that there has to be an official government statement statement confirming the information that we were speaking on and confirming that we were able to meet the third test meaning that there was an official government statement by ukraine saying that they have captured north koreans we are going to be vetting this as a true story at the moment but of course we will be waiting for additional video and picture evidence to come through to make sure that the story is uh sound and look man it's too wild of a claim if it's not true like why would ukrainians do that First claiming, though, they may be fighting here. Okay, I see that. Like, just feel. It's just like paranoia and feel. Oh, by the way, we captured them? That's way too, way too wild of a claim if it's not true. Like, why would Ukrainian say that? So clearly it's true. I mean, I would be surprised if it turns out not to be true solid 100 percent but moving on from that and into the area of the donbass we have been able to hear that apparently 3,000 north korean soldiers are actually inside of ukraine fighting for the russian federation now this is a completely different location than the one up in the bryansk and kursk oblasts and from what we understand okay does 3,000 even make a dent like i saw the video like how one million uh, russian might be casualty by the next year or something or in a few months from now on they already lost like uh, two, three hundred thousand people. Died KIA, not just casualty. Three thousand does that even matter? Like, why risk uh, global retaliation by just using three thousand troops? Like, do you even need them? That, like, those are not the only three thousand you're gonna need. Without them, like, nothing's gonna work. Type of way. Come on, right? Why would you risk USF, France, Germany joining the Ukraine war because they can just claim like, if you can use North Korea, we can be in fight as well. Ukrainians can call for us or something. Right, that's a risk there. These armed forces may actually be inside of the Donbass somewhere. We put this marker near Pokrovsk, but we're not really sure if they're near Pokrovsk or not. They may actually be just about anywhere inside of Ukraine at this moment. But it is very interesting to hear that the Ukrainian intelligence has confirmed that there's a whole other brigade, maybe the combat engineer brigade we heard about so long ago, that finally is inside of Ukraine. We haven't been able to get any video or picture evidence once again of them being there, but considering that a Ukrainian government source stated this information, we do have to confirm it as a true story for now without any video or picture evidence to actually confirm or corroborate the story. We will be waiting to see where these North Korean forces are, and hopefully once we start to see them on film, we will be able to gauge their combat effectiveness and also use this to extrapolate a great deal of information about the combat and effectiveness of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea's armed forces on the Korean Peninsula itself, especially considering that that may end up being a very... Dude, just in North Korea or South Korea, because I get confused. First time he said Democratic Republic, I'm like, oh, wait a minute, he's talking about South Korea? Oh, no, wait a minute, it's North Korea's name, like, okay dangerous situation here in the near future. Meanwhile, down in Grozny, we were finally able to get some police body cam footage of the major gas station explosion that occurred gas station explosion that happened in Grozny that has been supposed to be connected to some sort of uh, blood feud action that has been stated by Ramzan Kadrov against certain members of the Russian state Duma. But nevertheless, that is all of the breaking news that we have today. I've got to thank every single one of y'all so much once again for watching. Yep, there you go. I might have to remove that gas station thing because YouTube is just like that. YouTube just, uh, you know, that I just reacted to uh, what is a daily dose of internet, right? And I said how wholesome those videos are. Like he specifically finds clips that's not problematic. And YouTube just like yellow signed that. I put it, I put it to human review. And humans are like, oh, there's a violence in this one. Daily dose of internet. What violence? Like... YouTube doesn't even care anymore. That's the point here. So I can't show certain things. Even like people like, why did you like not show that or blur that? It feels simple. Don't blame me, man. I'd rather not blur anything. You, I, I don't like to edit things at all. But it's YouTube basically. But this was the most terrifying video from Enforcer that could have been. Do people realize the gravity of this? North Koreans are in Ukraine. North Koreans are attacking South Korea. Israel is about to attack Iran. Who knows what's going to happen there? there was like some kind of a thing between china and taiwan like it might it might be something it might not be nothing 
maybe there's a coordinated you know like uh, you know like thing going on with the new axis china north korea iran and uh, russia they might be planning the background you're going to do this you're going to do that you're going to do this we're going to like shock the world at a level that usa and other uh, western countries can't do nothing about it like they can't be all places at once so we're going to just shock them China's going to attack Taiwan, North Korea's going to attack South Korea, and, uh, you know, Iran's, Iran's going to do Israel thing, and, like, Russia's going to ramp up in Ukraine, the U.S. can be all those places. Like, that could be the thing, right? That's the fucked up part. Maybe I'm cynical, maybe I see conspiracies a lot, I highly doubt that. I, I like to think I'm very scientific, and I, if you've seen my previous videos, discard conspiracies a lot, but this feels real to me, I don't know why. And it's just fucked up. And co if conflicts rises... There is Pakistan, there is China, India could be at war as well, right? And uh, I don't know, I don't know, man. If all the major powers of the world, like Russia is at war, now US joins, China does war to Taiwan, China might attack India. Now India joins, like these are two big number-wise and every-wise like economies fighting. That might as well be global war at that point. That might be World War Three. That's the fucked up part. World War Three won't be like, oh, by the way, uh, Hitler, uh, you know, attacked Poland and that's World War Two. Oh, by the way, so, you know, somebody got shot in World War One. That's the World War One. World War Three might not be very easy to find, like where it started. It might be slow and creeping in, like, yeah. Only explanation, I get, only similarities I can say is like 2020 COVID. Why was COVID so fucked up, even though it was not one of the deadliest virus? That is like, you know, people can recover very fast because it was slow. People didn't detect it, and it took like two weeks before, like a week or two before before people realized they have COVID slow and hidden things are the most fucked up thing you when something you can point, point out that's that's the problem it's very easy to contain when you don't know where it's happening or which time it's happening and it slowly spreads it might be too late that's the fucked up thing of world war three all right people that was north korea destroys bridges and shit is going down around the world let's just say watch an enforcer uh, if you like my reaction don't forget to like and subscribe i don't know why i'm having tongue issues comment down if you want me to do any specific video or something I'm tr i try to like keep up with all this video but i miss a lot so if you think i missed some video definitely comment down i'll react to it and i'll see you next time